Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stephen King Reviews number 15. I'm your host, Super Kami Guru Alucard, and number 15 is Dolores Claiborne. This is the 15th book I've read, and my fifth favorite of all the ones that I've read so far. For the synopsis, by her own account, she's an old Yankee bitch. Dolores Claiborne, foul temper, foul mouth, foul life. Folks on Little Tall Island have been waiting 30 years to find out just what happened on the dark, eerie day her husband Joe died. The day of the total eclipse. The police want to know what happened yesterday when rich bedridden Vera Donovan, the island's grande dame, sans merci, and Dolores' long-time employer died suddenly in her care. With no choice but to talk, Dolores Claiborne talks up a storm. Everything I did, I did for love, she says. And this spellbinding novel is at once her confession and her defense. Given a voice as compelling as any in contemporary fiction, her story centers on a disintegrating marriage's molten core where the mind's unblinking eye becomes huge with hate and a woman's heart turns murderous. It unfolds the strange intimacy between Dolores and Vera and the link that binds them. It shows finally how fierce love can be and how dreadful its consequences and how the soul, harrowed by the hardest life, can achieve a kind of grace. But, that is for the readers to judge. They will come away with different verdicts for Dolores, perhaps, but once taken inside the dark room of her life, lit by the brilliant intensity of Stephen King's storytelling, they will never forget her. Very good summary, I think. <laughs> so, as we usually do with these kind of reviews, for Horror Factor, I gave it 6 out of 10, because while it's not rooted in horror, the story has its share of scares that reflect reality, and sometimes those are the scariest things in life. For story quality, I gave it 10 out of 10, because it's a literary masterpiece that I consider one of the books I've ev best books I've ever read. For suspense intensity, I gave it 10 out of 10 as well, because it's so gripping and thrilling that I read it in two days, staying up till 3 a.m. just to finish on the second day. For memorable characters, I gave it 10 out of 10 also because I either loved or hated the characters, but they were all very unforgettable. And that's what makes it great. So for the overall rating, with 6 out of 10 for Horror Factor, 10 out of 10 for Story Quality, Suspense Intensity, 10 out of 10, and Memorable Characters, 10 out of 10, it totals up to 36 out of 40. To simply put it, it's one book I could recommend to anyone. A must read. And my final thoughts would be that it's such a great book and I love it. Maybe it sounds a bit biased as a Stephen King fan, but it's one I think everyone should read if you're going to read only one Stephen King book in your lifetime. Make it Dolores Claiborne, because I honestly don't think you can go wrong. Some people have a bit of criticism about it being one straight narrative for the most part, but if you really pay attention to the narrative and you really see what she's saying, it will hook you right from the start to the finish, and you won't be able to put it down, as it was in my case. Being honest, I didn't really know what to expect with this book. When I first got it, it kind of came in a bundle of Stephen King books. I, I'd heard good things about it, but I didn't really know what to expect. And at first, I was kind of thinking, oh, what's this book going to be about? Like, what's it really going to be like? And I would say probably about 10 pages in, I was like, whoa, this story's crazy. What's going on? <laughs> like, I got to find out. And then I managed to read probably about 100 pages in one day. And then when I started back the second day, I was like, okay, I want to finish this book. Because I'll put it this way, reading that whole hundred pages the day before I finished it, I was dying the rest of the day to know what happened next. Like I was like, okay, tomorrow I have to finish this because I have to know 
what is going to happen next with Dolores. Like, she had already spilled out such a crazy story in the first hundred pages that I was dying to know where the rest of the story was going to go. And that's why this is one I could definitely recommend to anybody. I don't have too many hardcovers, but I'm glad I have a hardcover of this one. Just because, yeah, it's a really, really great story. And the funny thing is, normally because the pages are longer, it takes me longer to read a hardcover. So, to be fair, this was the fastest hardcover of any Stephen King book that I read. And amazing, amazing story. Like, the fact that when I did my top 30 list, I put this at number 5. That's got to tell you, this was one hell of a great book. I've still never seen the movie. I've heard good things about it. I'd want to watch it one day. But even the book, it's a classic. It's definitely, like, it's one of those books I would say, even if you're not a Stephen King fan, I think if you really gave it a chance and got into it, you would agree. It is just one hell of an amazing book and one great story. And the characters are so gripping and thrilling. And I'll put it this way, right to the end, I was on the edge of my seat. And then when it finally ends, it had one of the best Stephen King endings of any book, in my opinion. Like, the ending was just so perfect because of the struggle this woman has to go through through the entire book. That when you get to the ending, and it resolves itself, and it smooths out the tension in sort of what we'll say, almost the closest you could get to a happy ending in a Stephen King book. It executes it perfectly. So, as you could see, I've been doing a lot of these reviews lately because I'm in a position where I can't really release any music. I don't have the funds to master anything, which is why I'm constantly encouraging people, please stream my music, buy it on Apple or iTunes or all that. I could really use some additional support because it's not that I don't want to put out more music. I'm literally sitting on four albums right now, including the jazz album, the album with the Japanese flute player, uh, Revival, which has memories, many people like the music video for that, and of course the album I just finished about the industry conspiracy involving Diddy, um, Beyonce, Jay-Z, all these figures, because they're all crooked and shady, I'm sure a lot of people realize that from the news reports, but yeah, I'm sitting on these albums, and I can't release them until I master them, I don't have the funds. I literally have six cents in my bank account right now. So it's not that I don't want to. I can't. So in the meantime, that's why I thought, eh, I'll try and get as many of these reviews done as I can. Because we're at number 15, right? So I still have, well, 17 more to go. Because I've read up to Christine. And then once I finish this, it will become 18. Because this is the 33rd book I read. As you can tell... About halfway through it. It was a bit of a slow start, this one. But about 75 pages in, it really started to get good. And I actually, I'll put it this way. I love it so much more than I thought I would. So, this one's actually quite good. And I did see the movie, too. Which was quite entertaining. Like, they mostly focus on the epilogue and the first part of the story. But I really loved how Anthony Hopkins was as uh, Ted Browdigan. And uh, David Morris is the older Bobby Garfield also did an amazing job. So the movie's pretty good, too. I mean, I feel like because the book is several stories in one, they just tried to focus on the main story. And they did that good, in a sense, very well. But I am definitely interested in seeing where the other stories come into play and how they all tie together. Anyways, until next time, I'm your host, Super Kami Guru Alucard, and I hope you enjoyed this Stephen King review. Till next time, peace.